Well, you know, it's your old pal Keith from Groups.com, and uh, back with another video about Floppy. And it's high time, I would say, that we started looking at step mode. Um, it's one of the basic functions of the Floppy element. Um, it is only a feature of the Floppy element. It's not a function of a Floppy reader. But it has a step mode. Um, and what I wanted to do is talk about step mode in this video and I do these little I do these little pop-ups so that I remember what to talk about. I want oh yes, I wanted to talk about a little bit of uh, history. Now, if you're familiar with my um list shifter plugin, um you're you're aware that there's an there's a iterate uh action in there. And iterate can be used to sequentially execute some workflow uh, on a list of things. So like if I have, I don't know, I think I have 10 items here, for example, in that I'm storing in Floppy's RAM list, um, you can use Floppy step mode, or, or you could use uh, uh, list shifters iterate mode to step over those items and execute a workflow like for each item uh, that's in the list, right? Um, in List Shifter, this was um, very clever, and I'm not the first person to have stumbled upon how you would do this in Bubble. Uh, Gorov, uh, maker of the BDK plugins, um, figured out a, a similar uh, idea and um, uh, introduced one in a commercial plugin uh, shortly before I published List Shifter and its and its iterate function. Um, but the general idea there with list shifter was that um, we'd have a like a single workflow that would just watch for some trigger and we could just trigger as fast as possible um, all of these, you know, all of the steps through the list. So um, the, the problem with this, is it's actually kind of overly clever uh, because in list shifter um, that can really only be one workflow. Like you can watch for that trigger you don't have control over when the trigger's sent. Um, and so there's certain limitations. Like I, I see people sometimes in the, in the list shifter thread, they're trying to like, like loop over one thing and then loop over another thing at the same time. And you can't really do that with list shifter because you're sort of tied to the, um, uh, to, to the single workflow. Um, the other thing is, is like you might, you know, workflows aren't that, that, uh, that flexible. And so, like, you might have branching in a workflow that, like, you go from, you know, one workflow to another, and it's like, oh, well, now that I'm this other workflow, like, I need control over when I trigger the next step. Um, so, floppy step mode uh, is, in one sense, simpler than uh, list shifters iterate, um, but then in another way is more advanced because it gives you more control because you control when the next step happens. Um, just to talk a little bit about iteration. Um, sometimes, and you'll forgive me if this is, you know, too basic, um, but you may be new to, to programming at all. You may be new to web development. You may be new to any of these concepts, and you don't really understand what iteration and looping are. Uh, so I thought it might start by... Um, just kind of um, talking about what iteration is. Now, a lot of people think, well, Bubble doesn't really have looping. It doesn't have iteration, uh, but it does. It's, um, but it's just kind of hidden from you. Like you can't iteratively run a workflow. That's not possible in vanilla Bubble. Um, but every time that like, let's say you have a list of things, right? And you're doing like in a text element, you want, like I'm doing here actually, uh, like I'm exposing, okay, what's in Floppy's RAM list? What are the names of all these things? These are my favorite thing objects again. They have a name and a value and whatever else. They're just generic things. Um, whenever you whenever you say like, you know, show me a list of uh, each item's name, that's actually iterating. That's what we call a map function. Um in JavaScript land. And what we're doing is we're taking the list of objects, the things are objects, and we're saying, well, for every item that's in my list, object, go get their names and show them to me. That is, in fact, like a map operation. 
Um, there's there's other operations that we might do, like for each. Like for each item in a list, we could do something. We have other types of loops in JavaScript as well. Um, in this case, what we're doing is we're essentially saying like for each item in a list, let's do something and then go on to the next thing and do the thing for that. Okay. Um, let's, I try to make these, um, even though it's about a commercial plugin, I try to make these like generally instructive to the bubble verse. So what we'll do is let's like, let's just look at a really simple example of some kind of iteration in JavaScript. Okay. Let, let's do some coding, shall we? Oh, and my, look, my mouse pointer is right, right up my nose. You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. What's that old kindergarten thing? All right. I'm going to hit F12. And I'm going to go over to my console. Um, and in my console, my console, uh, I can actually write JavaScript. And so let's say that I have an array. Now, an array, an array is like a list. Uh, what Bubble calls a list is essentially an array. Um, and so I could say, like, let's say that var a equals some array, and an array is a thing contained in square brackets. And let's say that it's a, uh, an array of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Now, this array that I've called A is an array, and it has these numbers inside of it. And um, it is, um, it has a bunch of methods on it. So, for example, let's say that I wanted to take this list of numbers and double the value of each one. Right, I could say a dot map I could say um, it's cocktail hour uh, I could say <laughs> a a dot map uh for each item uh return to me that's what map does map says, oh, here's a function. I want you to run this function on every element in the array, so I could say a dot map the item to the item times two. And what this will return to me is an array of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? The, the doubled values of every value that was in the array. This is iteration. We iterated over that list of items. So Flappy Step Mode is a way of doing stuff like that. Now, I want to stress that even though I was just talking about doing a simple mathematical operation, we shouldn't use Flappy Step Mode to do simple math. Like, that is just dumb, 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 because we have the... Um, list math action that I explained in another video, and maybe we'll recap that in this video. Um, but let's say you wanted to do something like more complicated, like for every value in that array, maybe you need to do a database lookup, right? Like, I don't know, maybe you need to get its price per night or something like that. Now that is a use case where floppy step mode would be helpful. Or floppy step, step mode could be useful uh, in another context, like if we just wanted to maybe make some back and forth arrows that allow us to step through items in a list, and maybe those represent tabs and something, maybe they just, it represents a, an editing interface, like I don't know, um, but we could do that with step mode, and that's illustrated here. And what I'm going to try to do is, without confusing you, explain how step mode works just by sort of showing you an example, um, and then getting a little fancier with it. Okay. So I've refreshed my page, and let's just do like a simple illustration that that um, explains all the different steps that steps that we have in step mode. See what I did there? Um, so on this page, um, I've got this is like not an atypical design pattern. Like you'll sometimes see um, people use a repeating group, right, to sequentially display one item after another. So um, for example, in this page, I can click begin stepping. And now I've put the floppy that's hidden on this page here. It's, uh, let's go look at it. He's over here. He's over here behind my head. Okay. This floppy. We've sent an action to him saying start stepping. All right. So what happens is we get, uh, we actually get a couple of actions. We get like a, um, uh, a begin stepping mode action that happens, and then we immediately get uh, a trigger called step trigger. And what we can do with step trigger 
is anytime step trigger happens, um, we expose some new states in floppy. And so in this case, we, um, in all cases, we expose a, a Boolean, a yes, no, called stepping, like this floppy is stepping. It goes to yes, okay? And then we get a zero based index, we get a one based index, and we get the item that's being stepped. We also get the entire list being stepped. And I've, I've suppressed showing the, the actual list of items, but they're these items here. They're, we're stepping over the items that I've stored in Floppy's RAM list. Okay, there's 10 items in here. And now um, you'll see that what happened, right, is now this says Floppy step, rich currency and leather. That's the first item in the list. And then when I click this button, I'm going to trigger this action called next step. And next step just sends the next step trigger. And so when I do this, what's going to happen is the next item in the list is going to be exposed here at the step item output. So right now, uh, step item is rich Corinthian leather. Um, but when I click next step, it's going to change to frozen shrimp. Watch. Ah, next step, frozen shrimp. And you'll see that I'm basically stepping through these items in the list. Now, I'm not doing anything when this workflow happens. Uh, I'm just, um, it was just waiting for next step and I'm triggering the next one. Now, when we get to the end of the list, right? So we still got canary wings, face computer, a rotten banana, pants with zippers, now that I can dance. When I get to the end of this list, canary wings, face computer, a rotten banana, pants with zippers, now that I can dance, the next time I trigger next step, I'm out of items in my list and step mode automatically ends. Boop, there, floppy step, there's no floppy step. And you'll see that I had some, uh, I had some little alerts going on that, that tell us what's going on. So this is like, this is like a manual type of stepping, right? You might also notice that another thing that I did here is like, not only can I step forward through the list, and this is typically what we do in like a JavaScript for each or a JavaScript map or a JavaScript filter operation. Um, we're going to sequentially step through the list in order. Uh, in floppy step mode, there's also a previous step. And so when I click this arrow, we're actually going to go back through the list. And so we can go back to its start. Uh, and nothing will happen when we, we reach the back. When I try to, when I try to click back, 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 we're just stuck on the first item and I've got debug mode, uh, active. And so, uh, floppy tells us that the previous step action was triggered on the first item. So no trigger will be sent. All right. Um, and then, you know, I can just continue stepping forward through these. And again, once I reach the end of the list, um, step mode is complete. If you watch over here, you saw that um, we get a little alert for stepping mode started. We get a little alert anytime there's a trigger, right? And then we get an alert. This is just visualizing the actions that happen. We will get, and you won't see all of them because of the way the video uh, capturing works. Um, but when we reach the end, it'll say floppy stepping complete because we got the step mode complete event. Okay. Um, that kind of shows you how you do that manually. Now, let me hide my console real quick. Um, you can also step through bigger lists. And so here's an example. Um, if I just, if I click this button, just run it, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a list of 600 items. I'm going to go fetch them from the database. I'm going to fetch... 600 favorite things and then i'm just going to step over them and what you will see is you'll you'll see all this stuff change like very rapidly as we just step through the list watch whoa we what's going on there so we loaded 600 items um into this the step list and then we're just stepping through them so we just um ran a uh i guess it's uh what am I trying to say? I'm losing my words. It's, uh, we ran a de minimis workflow on 600 items. And you can see that that happens, that happens pretty fast. Uh, and in fact, if we weren't actually visualizing those items in our page, um, we wouldn't see anything happen. And this would, this would go even faster. And I guess one other like core concept that I should explain real quick before we get deeper into this is that 
Once you've begun stepping, there is actually an end stepping action. So if you wanted to stop stepping before you reach the end of the list, you could do that. So for example, here I'm going to begin stepping um, using my begin stepping button. And then I've got my little buttons that can step through this list uh, back and forth the, using the previous item. Um, if I want to exit step mode, you know, before I reach the end of the list, like before I reach now that I can dance, which is the last item on my list, and I can't seem to select it right. Um, if I want to end stepping prematurely, there is an end stepping action. And uh, when I execute that, Floppy's step mode goes to complete, and, you know, all, all of my uh, outputs here now disappear, and we're not in step mode anymore. Then we can restart stepping by just doing begin stepping. Okay, so begin and end, and next step, previous step. These are things that we can do with floppy step mode. So this is not a good idea, but one of the easiest ways to illustrate iterative concepts, right, is by doing math. Now, I, I think I warned you at the beginning of this video, don't do stupid things, show topics. Don't do dumb stuff like use step mode when you could use list math, okay? This still holds, holds true, even though what I'm going to do now is you saw how in JavaScript I made an array one through five and then I like doubled all the values, right? Like one of the easiest things we could do with step mode is to replicate that. But of course, we would probably want to use list math for that, which is much, much faster than step mode um, for reasons that maybe you'll understand by the time this video is over. Um, so let's like set that up because I think that's one of the easiest ways to explain how to use step mode. Okay, after that long talky intro, let's go back into our edit mode for a project and let's just make a, a really simple uh, iterative computation um, using floppy step mode. So we'll get back to this guy in a little bit and how he works. Um, but let's just set something up from scratch. So let's go get a new floppy. We're gonna use this floppy for computations. So I'm just gonna drop it into my page. I'm just gonna make it bigger because I like to look at it. Um, and then to set this up, um, as you know, floppy has a type of values, um, but we can use a different type of values, uh, for, um, our step mode. Um, so if I were just using this guy as a computer, and so we're going to call this floppy computer, uh, I might do that. It doesn't really matter that I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use this for storage. So it doesn't really matter what my storage settings are here um and you know i could just go and i could remove the the scalar key name and the list key name uh you know just so i guess if i looked at this later i'd be like oh he's just we're just using this as a computer um so we'll just leave it as the default local storage and then for type of values um now floppy has a, a data type and that that controls what it can store and it also controls its ram list so in this case actually i'm going to use the ram list and so i'm just going to make this type uh, numbers. So this floppy deals with number values. Um, and then let's see, let's change its color. I like the pink one, as you know. Um, it doesn't really matter what else I have set up at all, except for when we go down to the bottom in the advanced section, advanced step array function slash count output types. Um, oops, I need to change that label too. Uh, but anyway, we've got, we've got a step mode list type, which we can select here. And we must select a type for step mode. And we must select it here before we use it or else like nothing's going to happen. Um, this is just kind of a weird quirk of the, the bubble interface, right? So um, while the uh, type of floppy is number, I'm going to make my step mode list type also numbers. And you'll see why I did that in a second. Um, okay, so now I've got a floppy on my, my page that I can use step mode with, and let's give ourselves a way to activate step mode. So I'm just going to put a button on my page. I'm real big on these like ugly buttons, aren't I? Uh, and let's say when we click the button, we're going to run computation. This label could be anything, obviously, but that's good enough for now. And now what we want to do is when that button is clicked, let's, let's see, let's give these a consistent color. So we make these purple. We'll make my, make my computer stuff purple. So when button run computation is clicked, I'm going to put floppy into step mode. So if we type step for our various actions, we'll see that we have four step related actions. We've got begin stepping, next step, 
end stepping and previous step. Um, so let's do begin stepping a floppy. And then in the be begin stepping setup, we select which floppy we're, we want to use. And so this is going to be floppy computer. Um, and then there's a bunch of, again, there's a bunch of documentation here that explains like what happens. So basically when you begin stepping, what will happen is we're going to start exposing these step outputs, right? So you'll get the step index starting with zero. You'll get the step index starting with one. You'll get the current item being stepped. And then you also get a copy of the list that we're stepping over. Now, there's two types of, there's two ways to get a list into floppy. We can set the list to step here, and this will just be an expression of the step type. So I could have some sort of numeric expression here. Like, for example, I could do, I could do a search for, let's say, we're not actually going to do it this way, but I'm just showing you, we could do a search for favorite things. And let's see, we might um, say where they have a value where value isn't empty, right? And then we could say, so search for favorite things where value isn't empty and take the each item's value. Okay, that's an expression of number type. So that, that could work here. Now, if I don't have a list yet, like let's just say I want to do something n times, right? There's a numeric stepping mode. And so just uh, the, the one caveat here is, of course, to use numeric stepping, you would have to have the step mode set to number, which we already did, right? Um, so in this case, what I can do is I can I can just make a simple numeric list to step over, and I can do that by uh, telling Floppy the number of steps I want. So let's see, what were we doing here? We want to take the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we want to double them, right? Uh, again, it's a dumb thing to do. Well, I'll show you why that's dumb. Um, but let's do number of steps, and we'll say 5, okay? And then by default, if uh, if we don't set these, the we'll start at the number 1, and we will increment by 1 but we can also set that explicitly, and that's all documented here. Uh, so let's say, so five numbers, start at one, increment them by one, that will result in the numbers one, two, three, four, and five, right? Um, we'll get some of these other debug mode and advanced options maybe later. And now, if we go back into our preview mode, I should have a button that sort of does something. Hold on. Bubble's being slow today to load this little personal plan application. All right, so now I've got this run computation button down here. I click it and well, you know, nothing's gonna happen. We're not doing anything. We're just beginning step mode. So I guess what I wanna do, let's go into our page and let's uh, make it so that we can see stuff that's going on. I will put a little text element out here. Let's put a text element over here. Oops, is it gonna be big enough? I don't know. We'll just, we'll put him here. Um, and so in this, this will be doo -doo -doo, just so we can see what's going on, right? A floopy, floppy computer stuff. All right. So uh, what did we talk about? We talked about all the things we get. So um, when we go into step mode, uh, we get stuff like, let's do, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I'm just giving myself some placeholders. All right because writing these expressions is so annoying. All right, so let's insert dynamic data. This will be floppy computers step, let's say stepping. Okay, yeah, so this will be the stepping value. That's just a Boolean, so are we stepping? Get your caps mode off, Keith, stepping. And then we might have, uh, let's see, floppy computer. Sorry, this is this is really boring. Maybe I should have done this before, huh? Or maybe I'll trim this out. Probably not. Uh, let's see. The zero based index, right? And then let's see. What other step things do we get? Floppy computer. Floppy computer step. We get the one based index. Yeah, that makes sense. Then we get, um, let's see. Floppy, floppy computer. Floppy computer step. Let's see. This, the item being stepped, right? So that's, you know. For, the, for each index, it's the item that's at that index, right? Uh, let's see, what else do we get? We get floppies, floppy computers, oh, full list, right? Okay, step entire list. So th this this label is maybe a little bit weird. Um, this is, you know, don't get confused. This isn't an action. The step entire list is a copy of the list that we're stepping over, okay? So step entire list. All right, so let's see. So we've got 
step index from zero. We've got step index from one, step index from one. We will get the current item, item being stepped, right? And the full list being stepped. Full list being stepped. Okay, maybe do it like that. Let's see, what does that look like? Now again, this is just like, I'm just using that text element, like kind of like how you do console log in, uh, in JavaScript. And also you'll see that I, I will log these things for you as well. If we put the thing in de de debug mode, no, bad, bad, debug mode. Um, so now if I click the run computation button, right? Floppy enters step mode, cool. So stepping goes to yes, right? I'm on the first item, right? So the first index is zero, if we count from zero. The first index is one, if we're counting from one. The item being stepped, right, is will be the first item in my list. And again, my list is a list of numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so the other thing that happens when we begin, when we, uh, begin stepping is we immediately receive an event that is called a uh, step. Blah, blah, blah. What I was trying to say is that we immediately receive uh, an event called step trigger. And it's the first step trigger. And we can use step trigger to build a workflow or workflows that do something um, in response to this, the step trigger, okay? So let's go, whoops, let's go back into our workflows. And so, okay, when button run computation is clicked, we'll begin stepping. And then let's go over here and we'll make a workflow that triggers on step trigger. So we go into elements and we're looking for floppy step trigger. I hate that you can't type here. Stepping started, let's see, a floppy step trigger. All right, we'll make this also a nice purple color for our workflow. And then we select our element, floppy computer. So when floppy computers step trigger event happens, we do some workflow. And what we want to do is we want to take the current number that's presented to us as the, as the step item uh, and multiply it by two and store it somewhere. Uh, so let's use um, floppy's uh, RAM list for that. So I'm going to do add RAM list values a floppy and we'll use floppy computer. Um, remember a floppy computer uh, is of type number and so our at RAM list values will be a list of numbers. And so what I'll do is when I get step trigger, I will add a single value to floppy's RAM list. And what it's going to be is it's going to be, oops, floppy computers. I guess I could say, I could say this floppy here. So we could say this floppy's step item multiplied, right, by two. Okay. All right. And so that's going to push the doubled value into the RAM list. All right. And then what I do is after I'm done with whatever I need to do, I tell floppy to, to send me the next step trigger. So I then do just this action called next step. So step, all right, step for my floppy. I've got next step of floppy. So I do step, next step of floppy. And now what this is going to do is this says to floppy, hey, we, we did the thing we wanted for this step. Now give me the next step, okay? And so when we go refresh our page, we should do a little computation here. Although we won't see its results, will we? Because we didn't set that part up yet. So let's go back into this little text element and let's show you that result. That result is gonna be in Floppy's RAM list. All right. So let's see here, we'll go into our little text element and this will be floppy computers, computers, RAM list, right? This will be a list of numbers and we will just say floppy computers, RAM list values, RAM list values. Okay, all right, so now, we're, now we'll be able to see them. Oh man, and that's ugly. It's ugly, it's ugly. It's running right up against that. So let's just, Change the formatting a bit there. Okay. So we'll see all of the things. All right. So now let's go and preview our page. That was, that's, that's, that's just a lot to multiply a list of numbers by two, but that's how you have to set it up, right? It's not that hard. Okay. So now when I do run computation, whoa, look what happened. Um, all of a sudden I get this 
results of my computation, and these are the numbers I expect, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, which is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that are doubled. Uh, I can click Run again. Um, now you see, we didn't clear Fluffy's RAM list, so as I run this over and over, I'm just going to be like adding uh, more values to the end of the RAM list. So I guess we could make a little improvement there. Um, the other thing that you might notice is that if you look really closely here, you will momentarily see values there, um, but they go away at the end. That's typically what we want. Like when we're when when step mode is finished, like we typically want these values to go away. But if you did want to keep them around, you can do that too. So we go over into our workflow. Let's just show that. Let's see. Whoops. Begin stepping. That's an option here in begin stepping. Uh, and so we could do things like, see, there's an option for clear step outputs on end, and that's by default set to yes. I could set that to no. Um, there we go, get no. And then those values would stay here. Do, 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 different strokes for different folks. You might want to keep those values around. So now when we do run computation, you'll see that um, uh, these values uh, persist and uh, they'll be their last values, right? So the zero based index is four, the, the last one based index is five, the last item we stepped is five, the full list we stepped is one, two, three, four, and five. All right, um, and then see, we had this other little issue, right? Where like we just keep adding and adding and adding numbers to, to Fluffy's RAM list. Whenever we run the computation, we probably don't want that to happen. So let's see what we'll do. Uh, we'll illustrate the uh, stepping complete event. Uh, actually, uh, let's not do stepping complete. What we'd really want to do is we want to clear Floppy's RAM list before we begin stepping, right? So we would insert an action here and RAM list. We could do what could we do? We could clear it. Clear RAM list of Floppy. We'll clear Floppy Computer's RAM list. All right, let's see. Um, what about, let's do, yeah, let's illustrate um, stepping complete. Okay, so, so again, the, we begin stepping. We have a workflow that triggers on step trigger, right? At the end of that workflow, we do give me the next step, right? With the, the next step action. And then there is an event we receive when stepping is complete. So let's see, we can go elements, a floppy, a floppy, a floppy, a floppy stepping started, step trigger, a floppy stepping complete. There we go, we could do that. Um, let's set it to our purple color again. We want floppy computers stepping complete. I don't know, what do we want to do when stepping is complete? We could, we could put up a little alert or something, right? Um, but what I was thinking I might do is let's see how long this, this, whole, um, this whole loop takes. And what I was thinking is that we'll use our friend Debug Buddy, who's from um, the List Shifter plugin. Um, List Shifter is free and it's very useful. You might want to go add it to your project. Um, so you could add it in your plugins tab. I've already got it installed. Where's List Shifter? Oh, and in fact, uh, List Shifter is the development version in this project, but you can go get the production version of List Shifter. Um, and so he comes with an action called Debug Buddy. And so let's insert an action here called Debug Buddy. And Debug Buddy kind of can help you benchmark things. Um, you, you can write messages to the console, but it's got a really neat feature called Benchmark. And the way you use it is we'll reset the benchmark. And then we will set Benchmark here to yes. And now what happens is Floppy is going to record the time that this, this event happened. And then we can later compare that to another time. So we'll say, like, we'll set a benchmark in Debug Buddy at the, when we click the button. And then when stepping is complete, we'll do another one over here. Debug Buddy, we will benchmark it. Yes. And then we'll output the benchmark summary. And let's refresh our page. You won't see anything happen. Let's run our computation. If I run my computation again, yeah, now, now you see as I run my computation multiple times, I just, I'm not adding onto the, the RAM list, like we're clearing the RAM list and then putting the numbers in the RAM list, right? And then if I open my console with F12, we'll see the debug buddy wrote a bunch of stuff. Let's run the computation again and see what happens. Okay, so you'll see that um, what debug buddy does is it 
outputs a little message to the console. See benchmark starting. This is the time. Uh, and then we do another benchmark at the end of it. That's the time. And then by doing benchmark summary, it'll tell us um, what the total time was. So the total sampling time here was 37 milliseconds. So it takes 30 second mil milliseconds from the time we press this button to the time that Debug Buddy saw the stepping complete event. So like, that's pretty quick, right? But what if this list gets longer? I guess what we could do is we could, we could, uh, we could make this whole loop dynamic, right? Instead of just um, uh, is setting a hard limit of, of five numbers, why don't I put an input in the page? Let's do a little input. And let's make this like the number of items or number of numbers, whatever. Let's do, let's call it, what do we want to call it? First, it's going to be an integer. And let's do, well, we could give it some initial content. We could say its default is five, right? And this would be like your list uh, length of length of numeric lists. And now this is going to be input length of numeric list. I might want to change this name. I don't want emojis. I don't ask for emojis. I didn't ask for emojis. Input length, okay? And then let's see, when we're going, God, I keep doing that. And then we'll go into our workflows. I don't want my workflow folders visible. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, let's make this, where's our begin stepping? When step trigger, where's begin? Where's begin, there it is. All right, so let's see, when we begin stepping, instead of just saying five for the number of steps, we'll make this dynamic by saying this will be the input length, input length value, right? And so now, back over in preview, right? We'll have a way to send all sorts of different sized lists of numbers. We And please to reload, please to reload. Thank you. There's that ugly bug that I hate. So let's see. So we could do five numbers or we could do 50 numbers, right? We'll do 50. Okay. Ah, and now you're starting to see We'll even, we'll even close the console. Now you're starting to see that actually this takes a little bit of time. See how these numbers increment? Like, broop, broop, and we can see Floppy's RAM list being built in real time. Now that's not quite so fast anymore, is it? Run computation. How long is that taking? That's taking 455 milliseconds, according to Debug Buddy in that case, 458. So yeah, so it's anywhere between 300 and like 500 some milliseconds. And now that's going to scale uh, kind of linearly, right? So if we go to 500 items, that's going to take a little bit of time. See? Um, that was a fun sound, wasn't it? So that took, wow, that took like five seconds to just do this computation where we're doubling these, these 500 numbers. So you can see that, you know, the reason I say that, like, don't, don't use this technique unless you have to uh, when you're just doing simple math. I hate this this bug with the icons that they don't load half the time. I'm going to have to report that. I don't know why that happens. Like this is Chrome latest and this like kind of happens on a regular basis. I don't know what's going on there. Does anyone else ever see that? Um, so anyway, this takes this takes long enough that for significant lists of numbers, we, we wouldn't want to use this technique. But what we what we, sh we showed, right, is how you can begin stepping, like how you build a, a workflow that triggers on step trigger, right, and then how we receive an event at the end for the stepping complete. That's the basics of step mode. At this point, you've, you're probably imagining all sorts of things that you could do with this, right? And maybe you've done this before in the past with um, List Shifter or other plugins, but that's that's how it works here. That's how step mode works. Um, now, if we wanted to do this computation way faster, right, we've got this action called list math. So let's just like compare those two, okay? Let's go back into our edit mode and let's give ourselves a way of doing the computation with list math. So let's see. This is run computation step mode. Step mode. All right, and let's just copy this button and let's do run computation list math, list math, list math. Sorry, I was looking at my mixer, checking my audio levels. 
list math. Okay, so now when this button's clicked, let's go set up a list math. Let's see, we'll make this workflow purple as well. Well, so when button run computational list math is clicked, what I'm going to do first, there's a there's a new action in starting with floppy 1.8.8, which is the version I'm using here today. And there's an there's an action that's a utility action, and it's called make numeric list. Um, because we're gonna uh this is not part of list math. I didn't put a I didn't put a section where it's like you could you could make a list of numbers. I just made that a separate action, partly so I could do this demo, but um, this is a generally useful kind of function to have around. Um, and it was it was already there in floppy. It just didn't have an action interface yet. So uh, I will say utility make numeric list from floppy computer. And just like we uh, set up our begin step mode over here when the when the step mode button is clicked, uh, what I can do is I can say number of items and we'll say we want to make input lengths number of items, right? We're going to, oops, values, input lengths value. We're going to start at the number one and we're going to increment by one. Uh, and then the, what the, we need a place to hold those numbers. And so we've all, we already had um, uh, five outputs for the list math feature. So I just let you select uh, any of four of the list math result outputs because those are listed numbers. They're already there. Those outputs are already there. Um, and so you can select list math result two, three, four, or five. The default is two. Uh, this label is ugly. I need to fix that in a future version, but you select the output that you want. Again, everything's documented here, just like in all of floppy actions. So we'll make this numeric list. We're going to put it in the list math result two output, and then we will run list math. So let's get list math. There it is, utility list math floppy, right? Um, and so we say, okay, this is floppy computer we're going to use. And then we give it a, a list to do the math on, right? And so that's going to be this list here, list math result two. So we'll say our list for this computation is floppy computers, floppy computers, util list math result two, right? So that's my big long list of numbers. It might be, might be five, it might be 5,000. And then the operation I want to do is multiply by the number two. Oops, that's the list input. I want the scalar input, two. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to do that same operation that we were doing, like, you know, when we begin stepping and then on step trigger, we multiply by two, right? And then at the end of the day, we know we're done. In here, this just becomes a single workflow where we make a big numeric list and then we do list math on it. And let's see, we will send the output to, yeah, publish to list math result one. All right, so then on our page, let's just, I guess we could copy and paste this text element. We'll put our, let's see, we'll do, this is run computation step mode. Now you're too big for me. Now you're too big for me, floppy. You, you can be a cute little floppy. You can just live over here. And let's see, I'll move this around and move my input. This input relates to both of these things. So I kind of want it in the center. It doesn't have to be so damn big, now does it? It doesn't need to be so big. We'll just make it smaller. And now I'm like acting like Bob Ross. It's a happy little, happy little input, happy little input. Okay, and then this will be our list math one. And I group these so they don't fly around the page. Uh, where's group? Where's group? Group, group elements in a group. Group, group elements in a group. Oh no, is this guy gonna fly around? Maybe we should make this group bigger. Put him inside, huh? Put him inside. Do 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 do. Making ugly pages, and I just screwed it up. My group. Get a little bigger. There we go. Now here's our input for our numbers. Okay, and then let's see. Now we can put this over here. All right, and so our list math computation, I guess I'm just going to clear all this out. And this will be our list math computation, list math computation, computation, and then result. The result will be floppy computers, floppy computers, let's see, math, where's your math outputs? Utility list math result one, right? Okay. Um, let's just, uh, let's see. Ooh, do we want to benchmark that too? Maybe we should benchmark that too. 
So let's do, let's put our debug buddy in here. Debug buddy. Spell it right, Keith. Debug buddy. Let's see, we will reset the benchmark. We will record a benchmark. And then let's be fair. Um, there is when um, list math is complete, there is a list math complete event that gets triggered. So let's do that. Let's elements, a floppy, a floppy list, where's list math complete? There it is, a floppy list math complete. Make you purple, floppy computers, list math complete. And we will fire a debug buddy and just do a benchmark, right? And a benchmark summary, so we can see how long the operation takes. All right, let's preview our page. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up there with my formatting and my ugly page. Give us some room. And we're reloading a page. All right, here we go. So let's see. So run the computation step mode on five items. Okay, that took like 54 milliseconds. Run it on 500 items, that takes substantially longer. And we're finished, see that took five and a half seconds. And now let's run our computation with, with list math. Hopefully I set this up right. Oh, look at that. Oh, that, um, hello. That took 11 milliseconds for 500 items. Okay, um, compare and contrast. 11 milliseconds versus five and a half seconds. So that's, 5,500 milliseconds versus 11 milliseconds in the list math case. This is why I say, like, don't use, don't use step mode to do basic mathematical computations that you can do in other ways. And now you have another way to do them with list math, right? Now, we could get really extreme with this, right? We could do, how long would it take to do 5,000 items? Oops. How long would it take to do, if I went to the top of the page, how long would it take to do 5,000 items with list math? Let's see. Oh, it takes 50 six milliseconds um 50,000 oh 370 milliseconds 200 milliseconds i mean it's fast right um you can also uh list math does work in a way similar to process list um in list shifter i mean it's, it's actually more efficient because you don't there there's there's fewer functions you can select and stuff like that and there's there's less overhead um but it is designed in such a way like it, it doesn't use dot map uh or dot for each uh it actually uses a for in type of loop and so you won't blow up the call stack if these numbers get really huge so like i can do five hundred thousand items with list math um and now that will take a significant amount of time but it's only 3.2 seconds uh that's actually less time than it took step mode to do 500 right Let's try that again. Let's do 500 over here. 500 in step mode. Do, 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 do. See the numbers are incrementing up here. Uh, there we go to 500. So that took, took five seconds. And then 500,000 items using list math, like, you know, orders of magnitude more items, it'll complete oh, in 1.5 seconds. Um, okay, so we learned a little bit about step mode. We learned a little bit about list math. Um, what else? Uh, let's go back to this guy. It, you, you remember that I had this element, element, like collection of elements up here, um, where we can kind of step over a list. Um, and I, I just kind of built this to demonstrate, you know, like the next step and, and previous step actions. Um, and that you could use step mode in the same way that people, uh, you know, use a single item repeating group and do the next page thing on it. This is essentially doing that same thing, but just using using the, the, the step mode actions in floppy. Um, and if you did want to do this kind of, kind of thing, like you'd probably want this to loop around, right? You wouldn't want step mode to end. So there is another feature. Let's go back into our design mode. Begin stepping, where are you? Start edit workflow. So, Oh, these workflows are, are marked in green, the ones that relate to that element up there. Um, when we begin stepping a floppy over here, down at the bottom in the advanced options section, there are options that, like you can reverse the list if you want to. Um, so you, know, you can just set that to yes, because that, that's a common thing. You, you might need to step through items uh, backward. <clears throat> but there's also this, this thing called infinite looping. And of course, that's by default, that's set to no. But if you're going to have this, if you're going to build like this kind of 
you know, interface like I, like I built with the little back and forth buttons, I think you probably don't want looping to ever end. So if you set this to yes, um, the, uh, sorry, step mode, step mode will never naturally exit. It'll just like wrap around to, you know, from the last item to the first item, or if you're at the back of the, at the beginning of the list, it'll go from the, the first item to the last item, stepping backward. Um, and it'll never end. You'll never exit step mode unless you send the end stepping event, uh, which you maybe don't need to do ever. Uh, so let's just look at that. So once we turn that infinite loop mode on for the floppy that's controlling this little interface over here with my little clickable buttons, um, once it's in step mode, what'll happen is when we get here to item, to the last item, so long walks of the beach, boop. Now when we go next, see, we went to the first item. Or did we exit? Did we just exit stepping? What, what, what did happen? Oh no, it's just called Apple. Um, there we go. Doop, 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 doop. It would kind of be helpful if I were showing the entire list here, but there was a reason for that. Because if we do this, if we do the just run it, thing, you know, we, we put like this giant list in here. And if we displayed that giant list on the page, it would be very ugly and it would cause mayhem. Um, anyway, and stepping. Uh, so if when we're going to begin stepping here, you can see that now this will just loop over this, this list forever. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, is that a cool feature? Is it a dumb feature? I don't know. You might find a use for that. Um, again, you could build some, you know, cool little widgets using that. Uh, hmm. Is that all I wanted to, to say? Let's see. Show topics. Do I have my topics here? Okay. So yeah, we talked about iteration. We talked about don't use step mode when you could use list math. Um, oh, step mode debug. We didn't really show step mode debug, did we? Um, of course, when you're building iterative workflows, that can get um, sort of complicated. Uh, and so, for example, you'll see over here that when I when I click my little my little buttons over in this interface, you'll see that there's all these console log messages that are going on. And so like, for example, I'll see like if I click begin stepping, see it's, uh, um, we'll get a little note that, oh, see, we're calling it some floppy, some floppy, floppy step debug, creating list to step, some floppy, floppy step debug, list to step created in zero milliseconds, some floppy, floppy step debug, stepping started, some floppy, floppy step debug, step, step trigger triggered for item one. And then you see, we'll get a message for it triggered for item two, triggered for item three. If we go back, it'll say, hey, we got step triggered for item two. Uh, and so if you want those kind of messages and you, because you're debugging your logic, that's over in the begin stepping and you just set debug mode to yes. That's this option right here. It's by default, no, but we can set it to yes. And um, it, we can give the floppy a name so that we can tell like which one uh, we're working with. So as you saw, we had labeled it some floppy. That's the default, but I could make this, I mean, it's floppy A, right? So I could just say it's floppy A. And now my debug messages will be about floppy A. So that's, there's a little debug mode that's very helpful. Uh, if you're doing something more complicated than what we're doing here, right? So when I begin stepping, ah, see, I get messages about like floppy A. I could also then turn step mode on, or sorry, turn debug mode on for this other this other computation, but you know, it's, it's very simple and it's probably not really going to confuse us. Um, there you go. Uh, that's, well, that's it. I think for this video. Um, oh, we could do show one more thing. Let's do a bonus beat because there is one other form of, uh, iteration that's in floppy. So we looked at step mode. We looked at list math. Uh, there's also the code action. Um, and this is a pretty advanced operation. It's, it's for people who are, um, familiar with JavaScript, uh, but it provides kind of a handy way to do stuff on lists that's, uh, that's better. It's faster than like using other techniques like run JavaScript for various reasons. And we'll show that real quick. The action I'm speaking of is called code array method. And so, uh, let's see, it's very much like list math in a way. So what I'm going to do is, oop, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this with workflows, and then I want to paste it with workflows. This will be, now we're, oops, 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 oops. Grab the group, Crosley. All right. I'm getting a little crowded here. I'm getting a little bit of a traffic jam in this page. Let's make this one narrower. We're just, we're just trying to, 
just trying to show people a thing. Rabbit. Aw, oh, man. It's not fun to watch someone dork around with this, I know. Alright, a sec. I'm just making a place where we can show our... Did I do it? Did I do it? I know, this isn't like a responsive design, okay? So let's see. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be our code action. So let's run computation via code. It's called code array method. Code array method. And it's called uh, or, or that weird thing because you're gonna write some code and you're gonna execute one of the array methods uh, on it. Let's see. This will be the code. Code array method, array method computation. Uh, let's see, this is going to be at the code. At, let's see, array method output list. Yes. All right. Array method output list. We need to do one more configuration thing. Um, in our, why is my, why did my floppy preview go nutty? Get pretty. There you go. Um, this is also one of those things that you have to set because it has a type. Uh, down here, so advanced in the step array function output types, like just like we selected a a, a list type for uh, step mode, we set a list type for the array method output, and in this case, it's going to be numbers. Oops, number. So I make it a number. All right, and now I can use um, code array method. And so over my workflows, I should have a workflow that triggers on because I copied it. Here we go. This button. Start edit workflow. Yeah, when button run computation code is clicked. Uh, instead of doing the utility list math floppy computer, what we'll do, we'll delete that one and we'll instead do the code action because you could find that by, by typing floppy and then looking at all the floppy actions. Code array method. All right. Or we could have done like this. We could do code code array method of floppy. Okay. And this has an interface that's a little different. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Um, but we say again, you know, what floppy we want to use, we're going to use floppy computer. Um, and then we can select from various uh, array methods that are on an array in JavaScript. And the most typical one you're going to want to use is map. Um, but I, but I've set this up actually to use, to use any of the methods that arrays have where it sends, um, the, the item, the index and the full list. Okay. Just like, you know, just like we, we do that, uh, with the step mode, um, in JavaScript, these array methods do something similar. They, they give you the item, they give you the full list, they give you its index. Um, and when we select one of these, now what I can do is I can I can write some custom code that gets sent, and I can also give names to the arguments that get sent. So like I get I get um, a value for item, I get a value for index, I get a value for the full array. Um, let's see, ram list response by custom list. Ah, I see. So uh, I then I send it like the list that I want to process. So we'll use a custom list. It's set up by default to look at the ram list, I guess. That's an interesting choice of interface there, Keith. Um, but let's do a custom list. And so it's going to be the wherever we're storing this. Yeah, list math result two. So we'll take the list math result two, custom list, uh, floppy computers, floppy computers, math. Oops, math. Yeah, list math two result. Um, and then you write your code in here. There's an implied set of curly braces around this. This is a function. I know that it's stupid that like the long text box is not like a code box, but anyway, um, just like in JavaScript, like we, you know, when we, you saw at the beginning of this video, it feels like hours ago now because it was approximately an hour ago. You know, I did like this one, two, three, four, five, right. And then did a dot map on it for item to item to like, you know, item times two. What we're this function, this function right here is what we're writing in the in the code part. So literally, I can just say item times two. 
and that'll be my function, and this should work. You can also pass optional arguments. I'm gonna have to do like a whole video about this, but uh, this will make sense to, I think, to people who are coders. There's also some real wild features, like you can you can save the function for future use and stuff like that. It's very cool. Um, but let's just see if that worked. Does that work? We'll refresh our page. I don't know if that was, that wasn't very quick at all. I said I was gonna do that really quick, and I didn't do that very quick. Whatever. So, but we should be able to now do a code math computation. Let's see here. Oops, what happened? It didn't send anything to my output, did it? The error that I had made is I forgot that this actually has to, this has to be an explicit return statement. So it's instead of item times two, I need to say return item times two. Uh, and now when we do this, it actually works. Let's refresh our page. Do to do, do um, handily code array method has a little debug feature um, that I just turned on real quick. I just I hit pause on my video and just did that. So let's see. So we can do our computation here, right? Step mode computation. I can do list math version and I can do code array method version. There we go. That gave me two, four, six, eight, ten. I do. Uh, let's see. I do wonder how fast code array method is compared to list math. So like, let's do. Let's put this up to like 5,000 numbers. Now, don't hit this button because, boy, that's going to take a long time to complete over there. But let's see, list math. List math completed in 68 milliseconds. If we do code array method, that will, oh, 19 seconds, 19, 19 milliseconds. So that's like faster. So code array method is like actually faster than, than list math. Well, it's 19 milliseconds there, list math. It's 20 milliseconds there. They're almost, they're comparable, I guess. What if we're at 50,000? 50, 50,000, 328 milliseconds for list math and 126 for code array method, 141. So yeah, code array method is a little bit faster than list math, which sort of makes sense. Um, all right, that was, that was just a real quick look at the code array method. We'll do some, I'll do some like purposeful types of videos on that layer. But there you go. Um, iteration in list shifter, step mode, neat things that you can do. Um, ask your questions over in the forum thread on floppy and uh, have a great day. Also, this is the end. No one's going to watch to the end of this video, probably. <laughs> but it's Halloween today, Halloween 2022. And floppy's actually on sale. It's uh, seven bucks for a permanent license right now if you installed in an app today. And later today, uh, you know, whenever I get around to it, I'm going to turn that off, but it's on sale right now. Okay. Bye. Talk to you later. Have fun looping.